figures that we've been able to uh, uh, achieve. We saw the one calculated for 2013, I think, by the OFI uh, of 0 0.31. We're not quite sure. This is why I said I'll probably discuss uh, in more detail uh, or I'll get our statisticians really, who understand this figure even better than I uh, to, to, to engage with you. Uh, but our own Bureau of Statistics uh, did their own uh, figures and they came out uh, for 2011 with an MPI of 0 0.195 uh, broken down to rural and uh, urban. Uh, and the incidence of the prevention and average proportion of the prevention, uh, as you can see on the screen. The Bureau of Statistics data has actually been checked by the UNDP, uh, by some experts that, were brought, that UNDP brought in. And uh, so we, we think it's, it's probably much more recent and credible. Uh, and I think whoever is working in that area, uh, in, in OFI, we probably need to engage with you. Um, now, in the health sector as well, um, sorry, in the 2009, the HDI report measured three basic dimensions of human development. Uh, long and healthy life, uh, knowledge, and decent standard of living. In the 2011 HDI report, we are using basically four indices. The Human Development Index, the Inequality Adjusted Human Development Index, the Multidimensional Poverty Index, and the Gen Gender Inequality Index. And I've given some of the findings and figures in subsequent slides. Um, uh, and, and in fact, the, the, some of the old versus the new indicators that we have used uh, just to show uh, that, um, and, and basically, as I said, is the foster and uh, uh, method that we are using, and I'm sure it is very familiar to you. So I'll quickly just go on to um, The, 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 the focus on the multidimensional poverty index is based on 10 indicators uh, under three broad uh, groups, education, health, and living standards. Now, data challenges, I'm sure, which have come up all through the discussion today. And I think what we did in Nigeria is almost like what the professor, the Indian guy, yes, Adijit Singh was suggesting which is, it's so expensive to do these surveys. And our census data also in Nigeria is not current one because we are preparing for another census next year. And secondly, even the one that we have was very controversial when it was released. So what we have tried to do is to say, okay, Let's, let's, it's, it's like you were suggesting, take a number of surveys that have been done around a particular year and see whether you can actually mine the data from those uh, surveys, the general household survey, uh, federal ministry of education and other uh, national living standards survey and so on and so forth, uh, around that period. And that was what uh, was mined to try and get uh, some of those 10 indicators. And um, the education dimension has two indicators, uh, years of schooling and child enrollment. The, some of the uh, indices um, that, we, um, uh, that have emerged uh, are, are on the screen there. Um, then the health Dimension has two indicators, nutrition uh, and mortality. Um, again, as I said, this is basically um, your methodology to um, or, or, or similar slightly. Um, uh, 
Now, the um, the standard of living dimension has six indicators: electricity, drinking water, sanitation, flooring, cooking fuel, and assets. Uh, and some of the assets include, uh, you can see, for example, a camel and a donkey uh, in the extreme northern parts of the country, which are sort of approaching Sahara. Sometimes a camel or a donkey is more useful than a, a motorcycle because if you have a motorcycle in the sand, you can hardly go, go anywhere. So, um, these, these are some of, some of the uh, assets. And some of the, again, um, GI indicators uh, on slide 20, um, these are areas, especially in the health, where we are not doing very well. But we are doing a, a number of programs to try and accelerate uh, progress. Uh, and, and the Saving One Million Lives Initiative, already halfway through it, we have been able to, an estimated close to 300,000 lives have been saved through this particular uh, uh, scheme. So, um, now, uh, uh, since you've seen, I think, the figures, in summary, our approach to the, uh, we were sort of early comers, uh, sorry, late comers to the um, uh, multidimensional poverty index, but we believe that it is the way of the, of the future. It holds great promise, um, um, and those are some of the, the again figures in the health sector and in the education sector. Now, so this is the first part of my presentation. The second part, I think I still have a few minutes. Is it? Yes is to do with, um, I want to talk to you about the financing of development. Because no matter how you measure poverty, one of the biggest challenges that we are all facing is, okay, how do you fund the programs that <laughs> you, 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 you know, will address poverty? Finance or funding is always a challenge. So I want to introduce to you a group which is similar to this network that we have established called the Leading Group on Innovative Financing for Development, in short, Leading Group. It's a group of 63 member countries with various levels of development, and it seeks to promote the definition and implementation of innovative financing mechanisms around the world. I checked. Many of your countries are members of this group, you know? The, probably the problem is that you are not the ones who are representing your countries in this group. But many, about 10 or more countries that are here, are members of, of this leading group. This is because ODA, as we know, is actually shrinking. And therefore, we need to find alternative methods of funding development. At the 11th plenary session, which was held in Finland in February this year, Nigeria was elected the president of the group. So as I stand here, it is the president of this leading group that is addressing me. <laughs> so we, we We, we have the responsibility of actually um, um, articulating the uh, functions of this group and, and selling it. I'm, I'm saying it because you see, I'll try to link it to what we should be doing here. Um, so Nigeria is advocating innovative financing mechanisms as sub-regional, regional, and international development platforms like the ECOWAS, Economic Community of West African uh, Countries, the African Union, the G77, the United Nations, and, and so on. 
Now, we are also advocating a broader strategic framework for financing development post-2015 that goes beyond ODA. Um, and in fact, we are going to promote a resolution dedicated to innovative financing to be presented at the next uh, UN General Assembly. The success of this group, and sorry I'm, I'm going on, but you will see the link. Uh, I'm trying to link it to the way in which I believe this group should be organized. First of all, it's been fairly successful. It's older, it's over 10 years. But it has popularized, produced a lot of academic, initially academic work, but that has actually been utilized. Uh, for example, uh, a number of guarantee mechanisms of funding, also market mechanisms like uh, COT, CO2 emissions tax, levy on air tickets, the financial transactions tax is the biggest one because that one has to be done on a global level. Just like our global uh, index that we are talking about, the financial transaction tax can only work if it is global. But countries like France and a few other countries have already started implementing that. Actually, the secretariat for this group is in France. Uh, France initiated it and, and now the secretariat is there. Over $6 billion so far has been raised from some of these innovative. So the work that we've started here, or the OFI is doing as the nexus, in a few years' time, if we push it, I think my hope is that we'll be able to report some concrete results uh, like this. Um, now, the priority during our presidency for Nigeria this year is we are focusing on food security and nutrition, the fight against illicit financial flows, and the development of a robust M&E system. Just to give you an example, on the illicit financial flows, and this is linked to the whole issue of poverty and how you fight it. The latest figures that I've seen for Africa is that illicit financial flows in 2011 out of Africa is about $50 billion. ODA in the same year is $25 billion. So you can see, twice as much flew out of Africa than came in through aid. So if we can do something about those illicit flows, and contrary to the impression that is being created that it is the leaders that are taking this money because of corrupt practices. Only 3% of that figure represents amounts taken out by political, what, what they call us, politically, um, <coughs> what, um, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> only 3%. The majority of it is by big corporations manipulating taxes, manipulating purchases, and so on, taking money out of Africa. So yes, it's important to measure poverty, it's important to find ways of, but there are many things. And you see, this group that we are leading, the leading group, is actually one of the key things it's doing is fighting that, and developing a lot of intellectual work as to how countries can write on that and, and address the issue. Yeah of uh, illicit financial flows. Now, before I conclude, let me give the suggestions. You say, how is all this relevant to the network that we have um, formed? It's relevant in two ways. First of all, when I accepted the position of president, I was committed to market the leading group in every international <laughs> forum that I attend, so I've done that. Uh, and, and thank you for listening to me. But I think the relevance of it in terms of the form and the structure of this network that we have formed, I have a number of suggestions. First of all, the name. I think we should call it the Global uh, Multidimensional Poverty Network. We should add global. Yes, it's true. Lord Patton yesterday said it's a mouthful. If we add globally, it actually slows you down, slows you down a little and makes it easier 
to pronounce multi. But global because we are trying to, this idea of a global <coughs> index. <coughs> now global also because I'm so convinced with this approach that when I go back to Nigeria, I'm going to establish a national network in Nigeria so as to distinguish between this global network which has its nexus in Ofi <laughs> and okay I'll be done in now <laughs> and, and, and so I think you know we can also have regional subject is here you know ECOWAS the West African group uh, that will distinguish it from the global. So my suggestion is that in terms of nomenclature, we should call it the global multidimensional poverty network. Leadership, learning from the lead, leading group. You can see the leading group secretariat is in France. But every year, one country becomes the, the mini, a minister from one of the member countries, becomes the political mouthpiece of that. So I suggest that for this network, we need probably because we are starting a little late and to catch, you know, to catch the debate and be relevant for the 2015 debate, I think we should have leadership at three levels. At the presidential level, and we are lucky the president of Colombia has already offered you need somebody at that level. And once he accepts to do that, we say at every forum that you attend, please make sure that you make a case for this network. We need the second level is at the ministerial level. So that now since we at the presidential level, we have someone from South America, we can then say, OK, either the Africa region or the European or whatever, let at a ministerial level somebody be the mouthpiece of this group. Then at the technical level, obviously OFI would be the secretariat and the, the one that provides the intellectual uh, 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 support for that. <coughs> In terms of modus operandi, obviously we need to take like, active advocacy, like I'm doing. You know? <coughs> Because at the end of this year, the leading group is going to meet in Nigeria. Because again, the meeting is held uh, in the country of whichever minister is the president for that year. And I have to give account. I will have to say that when I came to the OFI conference in uh, Oxford, I sold, I promoted the idea of the leading group. At least I'm sure all of you know about the leading group. <laughs> So we need that kind of advocacy so that when I'm attending this conference, I'll say, oh, you know, how are you people measuring poverty? There is this network. Uh, and, and that way we recruit, we recruit a, a, a lot more people at, at both national or international, national and regional levels. And then finally, I think to thank uh, the organizers of this uh, um, conference, I have found it extremely useful. To show you how useful I, I thought it was going to be, and I've been proven, is that from, I just came from the TICAD conference in Japan, uh, which is the Tokyo International Conference on African Development. Mm. I attended with my vice president. Uh, I was supposed to go from there to lead a business group from Nigeria to India. But when I looked at the agenda of this, I felt this is much more important for my work as Minister of National Planning than leading a business delegation to India. And I came here, and I'm not, I'm not being disappointed. Uh, so I would like to thank you very much. For this. Thank you.